DeMarco Farr, Rams Radio Network, sideline reporter, won a Super Bowl, Rams over the Titans. You got the Rams visiting the Buccaneers Sunday. NFC Divisional Playoffs kick off at 3 Eastern. DeMarco, how you feeling, brother? I'm good, Mr. Patrick. How are you, sir? I'm I'm good. When's the last time you hit somebody? Oh, God. Like, you know, legally or illegally? <laughs> <laughs> well, either. <laughs> might, might be a better story. Well, I'm not going to tell you the other one. But, yeah, I mean, it's been about 20 years, yeah, since I tackled somebody. Yeah, no doubt. How is that? It's weird, though, that you spend, what, 20 years of your life hitting people. Yeah. And, and then you have to stop hitting people. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's something you have to learn um, <laughs> when you're playing football, <laughs> you really get a chance to take your aggressions out. And then when it's done, you have to learn how to like talk, you know, <laughs> how many hall of famers did you sack? Oh God, Steve Young. I never got Jim Kelly, but I got fined for drilling him. I think I touched Elway on a sack, uh, Warren moon, uh, a couple, a few Elway. I, I touched him down or he got away. Brett Favre twice. You uh, Hall of Fame guys, yeah. Did you talk to him? You know, I tried to talk to Jim Kelly. Um, he kind of like set me straight because I, I blasted him in St. Louis on that hard turf. And you know, when you run through a guy, you know when it hurts a guy. I can hear his like back crack. So I got up and said, "Yeah, baby, how'd that feel?" And he looked at me and says, "I've been hit by better than you." <laughs> and it just it just took everything out of me, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I went from this, you know, this rampaging beast to this little kid back in the sixth grade. So yeah, it's weird. Best Warren of- Moon tried to talk me out of a game because we go back to Washington. So he kept bringing up stuff from my past, like trying to keep me from being aggressive. <laughs> wait during the game like he would just Dur- throw something out th- throw something out he 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 brought up don james which is always a soft spot then he brought up jim lambright he brought up where i lived in mcmahon hall uh, at uw <laughs> i mean all this uw stuff you know it just it kept me from like wanting to you know break his leg or something <laughs> best lineman you went against oh man randall mcdaniel uh and bruce matthews uh, if you ask me the the first two plays of the super bowl uh, in Atlanta, I, I couldn't tell you. I was on my face with Bruce Matthews on my back. <laughs> uh, so Bruce Matthews, Randall McDaniel, absolutely the, the best ever. Randall McDaniel with that ugly ass stance. I'm sorry. Uh, you look at it and say, there's no way he can get me from there. And then boom, he's on your shoulder. It's setting up for disappointment in Tampa. It, and follow me on this, because I think mm-hmm. the Rams are the better team And everybody is embracing the Rams. That makes me a little nervous when you go against Tom Brady. I know they got line issues. You got two top receivers, Godwin and Brown not in. I don't know how good uh, Leonard Fournette's going to be. (sighs) Too many people like the Rams here. What do you think? That makes you nervous. I'm with you. A little Um, bit. A little bit. Yeah, you you've been in this biz a long time to, you know, when when everyone thinks you're gonna win. I mean, that's it just gives bulletin board material to the other side and Tom Brady is sitting over there. So uh, the people, the the fact that people favor Rams right now, it's, it's, it doesn't even get into my kitchen. Uh, It's Tom Brady and you're going to his house. He are, he is the defending champs. I said this right after we left SoFi when the the Rams beat Arizona, Uh, great game. Your, your gift for beating the Arizona Cardinals is you get the defending champs at their house next week. Yeah. The NFL is doing you no favors. You did yourself no favors with that. So uh, favor in the Rams, good. But it's still going to be a tough out no matter what. Rams win this game because of defense or offense? Hopefully because of offense, really. Um, I, I hope the the good Matthew Stafford you know, shows up, the one we saw in Arizona, the one that is great behind a running game where you don't have to put it up 35, 40 times, um, the one that doesn't turn the ball over and put your defense in bad situations. So I hope it's the offense. I hope Cam Akers coming back uh, has as much impact as it did versus Arizona. I hope Sony Michelle being uh, sharing the load at running back is going to kind of keep the offense on, on pace, on schedule, and the defense off balance. If you got to throw it and it, it becomes a passing game between Brady and Stafford, that's I wouldn't want that for anybody's quarterback. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't want that pressure. So I hope the running game is there to kind of pace it, help Sean McVay, call a better game, and you keep Brady on the sidelines for as long as possible. Who is Odell Beckham now as a Man, player? He, 
he's a star. Uh, if there was ever a guy, yeah, and you've been out here to Los Angeles, you know what this is all about, what this city's about. And so plop an NFL football team here that's trying to grow its fan base. He's perfect uh, for this environment. He's a great athlete. He's tremendous. He's, he's must watch. He's much CTV and he's, he's a pretty damn good receiver too. I mean, that touchdown pass he caught to, for Matthew Stafford, where he went up and over the corner. Uh, not many guys can do that with that body control. So the guy makes catches. He's got big hands. He's bigger than what you think. And he, he's a star when he takes his helmet off, he gets the same reaction as when he has it on. They just love him here. Um, at their best, Jalen Ramsey or Aaron Donald, if you're starting your team. Woo, uh, AD. Um, and that's that's hard. Um, AD, because I've seen him do it longer, and he's he's headed to Canton. Um, everybody I've talked to, John Randall to Warren Sapp to all the, the special guys that I came up with, uh, they all say the same thing. They've never seen anything like this. He's, he's, he's awesome. Uh, but that's still tough because Jalen Ramsey, here's a guy who just loves the violence of the game. He really does. Um, he's a corner, but he plays it like a safety and he coaches it like he's a coordinator and he has the presence of an outside linebacker. You don't see guys like that uh, too often. I keep wondering, I keep saying this to Maurice Jones, Drew, how the heck did Jacksonville let him go? Really? That th you don't let talents like this leave. So good. But the but Rams then he have forced his way out. He didn't want to stay there. Well, I mean, you could, with a guy this good, I would just turn a blind eye to what he says or what he does. And I try to make him happy because you want him on the field. He's been a difference maker. I mean, at times he's been your best defensive player, even with 99. But to answer your question, I'd have to start with Aaron Donald. That's why it, the, the draft is so unscientific, certainly at quarterbacks. But how many teams passed on Aaron Donald? Like, what was it, it that they, they didn't see? Because I always say that GMs sort of talk themselves out of drafting a player because they look at the negatives more than what he does well. They look at what he doesn't do well. You know, this is funny. And um, I, I was kind of there in the area when they were debating Aaron Donald. And it was split. You know, I never heard this before. He's a change of pace defensive tackle. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> you know, I've never heard that. But, I mean, all they kept looking at was his dimensions. He's only six feet, six feet one, about 285 on a heavy day, on a good day. Uh, but if you just look at that, you'd say, okay, we can't take him in the first round. He's not big enough. But then you turn on the film of the Senior Bowl, and no one touched him. No one can block him. He's the best player at the Senior Bowl. So why wouldn't you draft him? So, it was split down the middle, and I'm glad the, the the right side won because. And even when they drafted him, he had to wait to start. They just didn't. I mean, really, it was just it was just strange. I mean, the guy has been Aaron Donald since day one, and he had to wait to start. But as soon as they let him go, you, you haven't stopped him since. But they also missed on Cooper Cup. All these teams, uh, you know, yeah. I, I think being white, playing at Eastern Washington. Um, hey, he's not. He's a four six guy. Um, you know, he's not like a a Wes Welker or Edelman because he's so much bigger than those guys. Uh, so why, why do you think teams passed on Cooper cup? You know, this is why Steve Sarkisian will, I mean, <laughs> it's hard for me like to like him because Cooper cup was right up there in, in, in Washington. And we missed the Huskies missed on him. He's right there. Uh, same with all the, the Pacific Northwest teams you missed on him. But from what I hear, he just didn't look the part in high school. He just didn't look like a guy that could play. But when you turn on the film, the guy can play. So uh, I guess it's easy to overlook. And the white thing is funny. You know, that lasted about a half a practice here. And you know how some corners are when they see guys <laughs> like Cooper Cup, you know, step up in that line. Oh, my God, this is going to be an easy day. They give you the look. So Tremaine Johnson was the Rams corner, and he was kind of our resident tough guy. We couldn't wait for this matchup, Cup versus Tremaine. And the first pass in one-on-ones, he spun Tremaine into a hole. <laughs> caught a touchdown pass, and then, like, kind of laid the ball down, Tremaine shook his hand, like, immediately. So the white stuff was gone then. <laughs> you know, done. No more white guy. This guy can play. You better treat him like every other receiver. It's funny. Well, yeah. he was still white. He, like, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still, but, yeah, white. Yeah. Getting the respect. I asked Ricky Prohl the same thing. Um, You know, what is that like? And he said it, it's an ongoing battle, but with Cooper Cup, you'd never know it. He's just out there playing his game. And it still feels like he's underrated, and he had one of the greatest seasons a receiver's ever had. Yeah, uh, I think there's some jealousy there because there was a concerted effort to get him the football early. Uh, there were some problems early, let's not lie. Um, Matthew Stafford was looking for him. Even Robert Woods, when he was healthy, there was a game where he, he showed his frustration because 
there were guys open and Matthew Stafford still tried to fit the ball to Cooper Cup. So they're trying to get him the football. They're trying to get him open. He can get open on his own. Uh, even Sean McVay had said that the offense runs through him. Now, you don't get head coaches saying that often, but it's true. The offense does go through Cooper Cup. It's always great to talk to you. Sorry I haven't stayed in touch with you. Uh, always uh, appreciated you know, uh, your personality. The first time, This is the first time that you've actually interviewed me. The, the, the last time we were together, I actually interviewed you. You came to L.A. Oh, I think it was Gary Miller or Kevin Kiley. You came and I, you said I was profiling you because you said you had like a 30 inch vertical and I didn't believe you. And you looked at me. <laughs> and you, yeah. I, I, I still do. I still have 30 inch vertical. That I want to see. Yeah. Uh, safe travels. Thank you, DeMarco. You got it, man. Thank you. That's uh, DeMarco Farr, Rams Radio Network, sideline reporter. And uh, I, I remember talking to him at the mothership. We'd have him on. And I just, I, I forgot how good his personality is.